Kiss Fashion Part 4, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction written and narrated by Mira of Rose, with artwork for the opening and thumbnail image by Maniro on Pixiv. Maniro's Pixiv is linked in the description box as well as the prior three parts of this story. If you're still listening, give this video a like if you'd like and leave a comment to support the YouTube algorithm. If you don't know what to comment, put Miraculous Fight. Please enjoy Kiss Fashion Part 4. Adrian Acrest in his father's office. If you were a mega villain, where would you hide your priceless, powerful objects that could ruin the world? Adrian asked, looking through his father's built ins. With my teeth. Plag burped. The first six times Adrian asked the question, his little partner answered diligently. Somehow, repeating a question over and over can lose the sense of urgency. This was headed absolutely nowhere. And, as usual, Adrian had a terrible idea when it came to activities that led to absolutely nowhere. He transformed and took his masked face self up to his father's bedroom, tempted to kick it open, but instead knocking, letting his father come to him as he readied a grin. When his father opened the door, everything Cat Noir planned to say buffered, leaving both of them staring with jaws open. Unfortunately, Gabriel composed himself first. Cat Noir. He gave him a once-over, then glanced at his ring. To what do I owe this visit? Cat knew his father mentally went through his head for who worked security that day as he spoke, and laughed at the thought. I hear your secretary is sick. Thought I could help. I don't see how that's any of your concern. I hear it's from a miraculous fight. Gabriel towered over him. I'm afraid I'm not following. Listen, I don't know who Ladybug gives Miraculouses out to. That much was true. But if she gave Natalie a Miraculous and it hurt her, then it's my job to clean it up. He was lying through his teeth, but a terrible idea stitched itself into the suggestion, and he was ready to rip it out. Gabriel studied him for a moment then gestured to let him inside. Okay. That was easier than he thought it to be. How? He stood behind him, and Cat could feel the way his father stood with his hands behind his back. Somehow knowing he was a top-wanted terrorist made him less scary than being his father. Like this. Cat walked over to Natalie, took the still-warm seat next to the bedside, and looked directly at his father as he hung his hand above her throat. Cataclysm! As Adrian, Cat saw what he thought was the entire catalog of faces Gabriel could make. He was wrong. Paris's hero. His face darkened. Give me your miraculous, hawk moth. For a moment... Cat didn't think Gabriel would admit it outright, but to his surprise, his father started laughing. That's it? Had he ever seen him lose composure like this? All I need to do is wait for five minutes, then take you out myself. Ladybug doesn't know I'm here. Oh? Do you really think I'd show up at our nemesis' home without coming prepared? What do you have planned, child? Cat swallowed as his ring beeped. In four minutes, if I don't have all of the Miraculouses in your possession, I'll cataclysm Natalie. You're bluffing. If you wait me out, I'll lose my ring to you. I'm not bluffing. If I'm going down, I'm taking her with me. Silence spun between them, crawling back and forth as their game of chicken webbed closer. Another beep, then another one. 
less than two minutes now, and Kat wasn't sure either of them blinked. At least Natalie was asleep for this. Silence sat in her cradle, its beady eyes shifting between them like a spider. The last beep came, and Kat's face twisted. He'd made his bed. Time to lie in it. Cat Noir turned to Natalie, heart sinking. I'm sorry about this, he whispered, then leaned forward, pressing his hand to her pillow. The bed disintegrated, and Cat scooped Natalie's body up, shielding her from Gabriel's view. He wouldn't be able to tell, would he? It'd be best to not stick around and wait. And what exactly is the plan? Plague wheezed, flying out of the transformation as Adrian set Natalie, still unconscious, into his bed. He only had less than a minute to get out of there, so he stowed himself in his bedroom before his father's shock wore off. Still working on that bit. This feels like a crack plot line. Maybe it is, a little bit. Adrian bit his thumbnail. Was it time to get Ladybug involved? He was in over his head, and there's no telling how his father was going to react once he composed himself. He was a supervillain with years of experience, after all. Eat your cheese. You don't have to tell me twice. <sighs> All he wanted to do was confess to Lady Mirnat and live happily ever after. Why did he have to take down a villain to do that? Taylor Swift didn't mention any of this in her song about how to get a girl. Then he felt it. The immense, quaking power of the miraculous, standing his hair on end. Plague! he yelled. He had to be ready. He had to. But then, just like that, the power exploded away. Had he imagined it? That murderous intent, that spine-chilling sensation? No. Not possible. And now, Adrian had another idea. Come with me, he said grabbing Plague and stuffing him into his shirt as the Kwame continued to gulp cheese. You're not going to transform? Shh. Adrian made his way to his father's bedroom, knocking on the door first. Father? When no response came, Adrian pushed through the threshold. Therein his father sat, empty eyes, with Kwamis he recognized floating around him. Should he go in as himself? Should he transform? Adrian strode in, knelt beside his father, and took the butterfly miraculous out from underneath his throat. This must be it. He hadn't seen it in person before, but this was as good a, a guess as any. Then he took as many miraculous as he could find, although they weren't all there, and pocketed them. Then, finally, he led his father to bed, tucked him in, and turned off the lights, praying the damage wasn't permanent. They'd known using multiple miraculouses at once was dangerous. This was the proof. Adrian might regret this for the rest of his life. Adrian might thank himself for this for the rest of his life. He turned and left the room, and then the building. For once, freedom didn't feel like he thought it would. Adrian strolled down the street, somehow lax in his emergency then tootled through the Dupang Chang Bakery and up to visit Marinette after the standard bonjours. 
all of this felt surreal. Adrian? Marinette blinked as she walked in. Adrian! She moved to clear off her desk, stuffing things into drawers, completely unaware of what he'd just accomplished, and perhaps the consequence of said accomplishment, both positive and negative. I got you something. You got me something? Yeah, I'll tell you for a kiss. Uh, um, she looked at him, jaw open, and Adrian immediately felt ashamed for suggesting it. Uh, sorry, I, uh, here, I have something for you. For me? For me? She glanced at the mirror, most likely where Tiki was, then straightened her back and tried to smile. What? Uh, uh, a kiss wouldn't be enough? Oh, to be teased. Marinette should throw away her sense of humor, while someone else will try to take her up on her offers. Here. Adrian reached into his pockets and pulled out a few of the miraculous jewelry. She looked at the jewelry, then dropped to the floor. What did you... Did you visit the, um, the, 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 the thrift store or something? I figured out who Hawkmoth was, threatened his partner, then took his miraculous when he tried to use a half dozen at once. Oh, Marinette swallowed. Totally. And now we can live happily ever after. Am I on drugs right now? Adrian cracked a smile, the first genuine one since finding out he shared blood with the city's nemesis. I'm your partner, Marinette. He held eye contact until she looked to the cookies on her desk, muttering about bourbon and baking times. Thankfully, the Kwamis flew out and swarmed Marinette with affection, proving the legitimacy of his actions as the situation clicked together. Adrian, watching his love get distracted through Kwamis and tears, transformed, taking a seat on her chase and waiting patiently for twenty minutes until she composed herself enough to notice. Cat Noir! What are you? She hadn't put it together, had she? I'm your partner, Marinette. Her eyebrows shot up, and she looked around the room. Did Adrian leave? Kat sat, holding his tongue as her expressions showed what she realized in real time. No. Marinette shook her head, voice soft. No, that's not... He picked up the Cat Noir plush and stood, walking to close the distance between them. You're my partner, Marinette. The Kwamis gasped as he leaned in, some of them fighting to cover another's eyes, only to sigh in unison when he pressed the plush to her lips. Mogmoth doesn't exist anymore. We can know who the other is now. Right? How long? She swallowed, looking into his eyes. How long have you known? Kat smiled, realizing she wasn't sure if he was Adrian or not. Since this morning. How did you... She looked at the Kwamis. How did you... I talked to my cousin and... Met told him I'd give him my identity if he gave me hawk moths, and then we just kind of stared at each other once we learned super scheming runs in the family. And then you threatened hawk moth's partner? Oh, I straight up catnapped her after making him think I cataclysmed her. I'm definitely hallucinating. We're in the crackfic plotline, yeah. 
Huh? Kiss me, Marinette. Kiss me and I'll tell you everything. Somehow, asking for a kiss killed the moment, because Marinette stepped back as if composing herself. If this is real, she began, if this is real, then... Marinette looked at him, tears in her eyes, and Kat realized he'd missed a step. I know. He stepped forward, embracing her as she started to cry. He was so focused on salvaging this relationship after ruining the one he had with his father, he'd forgotten to recognize Marinette's needs. It took another twenty minutes for her to calm down, her body starting the detox of survival mode. He couldn't blame her. And to think, he was more concerned with his dating life than realizing what a behemoth of a cloud Hawkmoth having the most of the miraculous would be. Sure, he couldn't find the peacock miraculous, and that was concerning, but they'd figure it out together moving forward. You're right, she whispered. We can know who the other is now. You're not going to give me grief that there's still a miraculous out there? I would guess Felix has it. Any ideas why he'd want it? Something to do with Santa monsters? I'm not sure. But you said he already knows your identity, so it doesn't matter if I... She paused, thinking through what she said. Wait. I'm Adrian Agrest. What? No. No, you're not. Marinette pushed herself out of Kat's arms. You're lying. My lady, do I ever lie to you? Yes, especially when you're trying to get kisses. So make me honest. Should he ask for a kiss? Claws in. It was a whirlwind of a day for both of them, with him single-handedly accomplishing what their team couldn't do for years, all because he found out her identity and wanted to confess in turn. So here, with the two of them standing in the other's arm, her face wet with tears and his holding a smile, Adrian Agrest leaned in, and kissed Marinette Dupang Chang. It feels good to win, doesn't it? If he were Cat, and she were Ladybug, she'd throw him a line about if he meant getting the miraculous or the kiss. But right now they were civilians, and he was pretty sure the news of her classmate being her superhero partner broke her. Marinette stood there, pink-faced and staring into space. <laughs> oh well. Today, he'd found out his lady's identity, fell into cahoots with his potentially evil cousin, emotionally destroyed his father-slash-nemesis, and kissed the girl he liked. Not bad for an afternoon. Maybe he should take homework assignments to his classmates more often. Still smiling, Butterflies tickling his stomach, Adrian went in for another kiss, and this time, Marinette kissed him back. This was a good ending. The two of them, after years of pain and anxiety, found a happy ending, still together when it was all said and done. Thanks for listening. That was the mini series Kiss Fashion. Leave a comment if you liked it. And if you don't know what to comment, uh, comment Kiss Fashion. Because, you know, why not? Um, leave a like if you liked it. And you can check out these other videos for more Miraculous Ladybug fanfiction. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!